Water is H2O, which can crystallize within air to give us snowflakes. Hexagonal in shape. Yum! The six sides stem from the bonding angle of hydrogen atoms with oxygen. Within the hexagonal structure of ice crystals are open pockets that make ice less dense than water, which is why ice floats in water. These open pockets play an important role in the thermal expansion of water, the topic of this lesson. Here's a graph of volume versus temperature that shows that water, like most other substances, expands when heated. But interestingly, it doesn't expand in the temperature range between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius. Instead, it lowers to least volume at 4 degrees Celsius. Why this is true is quite fascinating and has to do with the open structures of ice crystals. Water molecules in the open structure of ice occupy a greater volume than in the liquid phase. That's why water expands as it freezes. When ice melts, not all the open structured crystals collapse. Some microscopic crystals remain in the ice water mixture, making up a microscopic slush that slightly bloats the water, increasing its volume. So ice cold water has more volume than slightly warmer water. As the temperature of the ice cold water is increased, more of the remaining ice crystals collapse. Let's return to our volume versus temperature graph. I show in green the thermal expansion without regard to ice crystals. I show in orange the effect of volume due to collapsing ice crystals in the water. Note that at zero degrees, my orange line is higher than the green line. As said, at zero degrees, the ice water is bloated due to the presence of ice crystals. These two processes, thermal expansion and initial contraction, occur at the same time. The result, which I show in yellow, is the dip in the curve at four degrees Celsius. Beyond four degrees, expansion overrides contraction because by then most microscopic ice crystals have melted. This is summarized in this figure. Between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius, region 1, the volume of water decreases as temperature increases. Above 4 degrees Celsius, region 3, water behaves the way other substances do. Its volume increases as its temperature increases. And where in this graph is water the densest? That's right, region 2 at 4 degrees Celsius. The volumes indicated are for a 1 gram sample. Note we're focusing on a small part of the range of water from freezing to boiling temperatures. The upper right part of the inset shows that when ice water freezes to become solid ice, its volume increases by nearly 10%, which is why frozen water breaks pipes. This decrease in density is also why ice floats on water. Like most other substances, solid ice contracts with further cooling. Ponds and lakes freeze from the surface downward. Let's see how I treat this idea in class. Here's a lake. Let's suppose that lake is 10 degrees above freezing. So it's not going to... What's the temperature which freezing takes place, gang? Yeah. Zero. Okay, so if I'm going to freeze some water, I've got to bring it from 10 down to zero, yeah? Okay, let's suppose out here, this is the air, let's suppose it's 50 degrees below zero. I mean cold. And that cold air blows over the top of the lake. How many people think that cold air blowing over the top of the lake is going to make the temperature at the surface go up? Show of hands. Good, nobody. How many say that cold air would probably make the surface temperature go down? Show of hands. Well, almost everybody. Well, uh, oh, hey, we, hey, we got everybody? Does everyone think that? If you got 50 degrees below zero air blow over you, you're going to get colder, not warmer? Is that remarkable? <laughs> come on, you, come on. There's nothing remarkable about that. But I'll show you a remarkable consequence of that. <sighs> Turns to nine. We'll do it by incremental steps. Nine degrees. The wind. <sighs> Eight. Do anyone see something unusual here? Let me ask you a question. If I take a rock and throw it in that lake, what's the rock going to do? How many say, oh, it'll probably float? <laughs> <laughs> the rock is going to sink, man. And why is the rock going to sink? 
Well, it's characteristic as a rock just to sink. Come on, why does the rock sink? Because it's more dense than the water, right? How about this four degree water? What's it going to do, gang? Begin with an S, end with an ink. Sink. Sink. Sink to the what? Bottom. The bottom. <laughs> Here's your four degree water down here. What takes its place? Begin with a T. Ten. Ten. <laughs> By now it's February. Get the idea? Honey, we're going to need a long winter to get to that lake. But now it's March. <laughs> Makes up, okay. What happened at four, honey? By now, it's, it's, it's May. It's April and May. <laughs> We're running out of winter. You can't get a deep, deep lake to get on four degrees. Before you can get any three degree water, never, never mind zero, what are you going to turn the whole lake to? Four. And let's suppose we had like a big meteor hit or something and <laughs> we get like no sunshine for about four or five years. Then we'd get something like this. Keep doing the same thing. Then pretty soon, if, after a couple of years of that, then it would all be four. Honey, that's a lot of energy taken away by that cold wind. When you get the whole lake four degrees Celsius, then, and only then, that's the first three degree water that lake has seen, guy. Does it stay there or does it sink? It stays there because what's down below is more dense. The lighter, the less dense will float on top of the more dense. That makes sense? Watch. Now we've got zero degree water. Those of you who are sitting close today will see something that those in the back of the room might not see. But watch very carefully to what happens to the water at the top. Do you see that? Did you guys see that? Did you see the crystals form? Again. <laughs> see, it's a little thicker. Did you see those crystals form at the top? <laughs> Do you see now why ice forms at the top of a body of water? Ain't that neat? So now you start to get some ice, and the ice floats on top of the other water. But you see why you have to have, oh, why that only happens with a shallow water? You go up to Lake Tahoe, and you take a saucer full of water, put it outside your motel room, come in and play checkers half the game and go back there, yeah, boom, that water is solid ice. And you look out at the lake and it stays water all the time. Now you'd be seeing why? A reason for those sort of things. So ice doesn't form on bodies of water unless all the water is cooled to four degrees Celsius. Only then can lower temperatures of water remain on the surface to undergrow freezing. Fish are glad that this is so. I want to leave you with a question. What was the temperature at the bottom of Lake Michigan on New Year's Eve last year? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.